Oh, I forgot it does that. Walk This Way was crazy because it was probably like the eighth record on the album that we started to record. And originally, me and Rum was just going to sample it and rhyme over it because it was one of our favorite breakbeats to rap over. Uh, we didn't do Walk This Way to be rock stars. We didn't do Walk This Way to change music. Everything that Walk This Way did, it wasn't the intent. It was one of the dopest breakbeats ever. Matter of fact, it was on a hip-hop breakbeat compilation. And we was in the studio, and we was going to sample it, and we was going to loop it, and me and Rum was going to talk about how good we are. I'm DMC in the place to be, the best MC in history. Been rhyming on the mic since 83. There will never be an MC better than me. And then Rum would go, I'm DJ Run, and I'm number one, whatever, whatever, whatever. So he's in the studio get ready to sample it and steal their record. Rick Rubin, producer extraordinaire who was working with us at the time on the Raisin Hell album, he walks into the studio and he goes, hey guys, what's up? We say, yo, we're getting ready to make this record. And Rick goes, oh, you know what? That's Aerosmith. You know who those guys are? And he was like, what are you talking about? He wanted to give us the 411 on Aerosmith. Me and Ron didn't even know that the name of the record was Walk This Way because we used to just tell the DJs like Jam Master J, yo, get out Toys in the Attic. We knew that was the name of the album. And play number four. And it's crazy that number four is number four in our album. Make a long story short, Rick was like, yo, y'all should do the record over. Now me and Run, we was thinking from a limited hip-hop perspective. We're going to sample it and we're going to rhyme and talk about how we good we are. But then Rick goes, no, you should do the record over the way um, they, they, the band originally did that. Jam Master Jay, rest in peace. Jay goes, yo, that'd be a sick idea. Me and Rubber was like, hold up, hold up, wait, wait, wait. Y'all taking this rock rap stuff too far because people forget, Walk This, it's a tongue twister. Walk This Way wasn't the first rock rap record. The first rock rap record was Rock Box, which was the first rap video on MTV. That was a rock song with me and Run Ramen. Then me and Run had the balls to do King of Rock, talking about we're the kings of rock, which was on a second album with Larry Bud Melman from the David Letterman show telling us, you guys can't come in here. This is a rock and roll museum. So me and Run wanted to carry on that tradition, make a rock song and talk about how good we are. Rick took the record off the, he took the record off the turntable and said, take Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic to the basement take out a pen and paper and sit there and write the words down so we can learn the words. Because me and Run had never heard the singing. Why? Jam Master J, Grandmaster Flash, Theodore would never let the record play that far because as soon as the guitars went da -na 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 -na, back to the front. So me and Run had never heard the singing on the record. So we go to my basement, true story. We put the needle on number four on Aerosmith. We take out a pen and pad, and we sit there, and we was going to let the record play. It said, Me and Run sitting in anticipation. We didn't know what was coming. Then you hear Steven, backstroke level with the hot need to cover. Me and Run get on the phone. Oh, hell no. We ain't making this. This is country bumpkin music. This is hillbilly gibberish. Y'all trying to ruin our careers. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and Africa Bambada ain't going to like this. We are not doing these lyrics because it just sounded. Because y'all understand, it was the first time I was hearing the singing on Walk This Way that we didn't even know the record was called Walk This Way. So we on the phone, oh, hell no, we ain't doing it. Russell screaming, Joey, you Emma, Effa, Emma, Effa, Emma, Effa, Emma, Effa, this, and A word, dad, and B word, this, and Emma, Effa, this, put D on the phone. D, y'all Emma, Effa, and ass following this. And he screamed, up. I hung up the phone. So me and Russ sat in my basement, true story, for six hours. The phone was ringing. We knew it was Russell and Jay, you know. If this is run, I'm going, you pick it up. He's telling me, no, you pick it up. You pick it up for six hours, pick it up so. We ducked them for a whole week. A whole week goes by, Jay calls. Oh, that's Jay. Yo, Jay, what's up? 
true story. You still hear Russell in the background screaming, am I after this? And Jay goes, Russell, stop screaming at him. You know these stupid little kids, if you keep screaming at them, they're never going to come to the studio. So Jay, he's using psychology. He said, yo, listen to this. Holds the phone up. Me and Ron go, yo, Jay, what's up? Where you at? Jay goes, yo, we at the studio. Rick done went to Boston and brought Steven Tyler and Joe Perry here to the studio. And Steven them is in, in here busting your ass. So me and Joe, we kids, ah! yeah, Jay, what's this? This is going to ruin our career. Man. Calm down. Go, no, Jay, because this is We crying and stuff like that. And Jay, and Russell's still screaming. Jay says this, yo, yo, here's what you do. Just come to the studio. Come to the studio and lay the vocals down. That's all you got to do. Steve is going to recreate his. Um, Joe Perry's going to play. So make a long story short, we get to the studio. We walk in the studio. First thing we do, we walk in the studio. And it's like reality. Oh, shoot. And this is funny. It's, I love Steven Tyler. We walk in there. Me and Joe don't know no better. We go, oh, shoot. The Rolling Stones is in here. Steven goes, no, no, we're not the Rolling Stones. That's the other group. So that kind of broke the ice or whatever, whatever. So originally... When we walked in there, today was like, did you write the lyrics down? We wrote the lyrics down to a, the best of our ability. If you listen to their version and you listen to our version, I think there's two different words that we messed up here and there. He says, um, hey, Diddy Diddy with a kitty in the middle, talking about the, the, the puss. And we go, hey, diddle diddle with a titty in the middle. And then there's another word that we missed by, um, you know, because we didn't know because we was listening to it. There wasn't nothing. There was no technology. It was no computers and iPhones for us to have play the record and have it dictate by the computer. So we go in there and originally me and Run did the record like this because we did not want to do the record. Jay was like, go in there and put the lyrics down. So Joe went in by himself first. Put the music on. Backstreet lover, high enough to cover, talk to my daddy, say, ain't seen nothing in down. He did his part. He I went in there. Put the damn music on. Seesaw swinging with the, we like little stubborn kids. Seesaw swinging with the boys in school. So we come out the booth and Jay's waiting there like this. And we like, why? Why? So he's like, yo, y'all get in there and put the lyrics down, man. And then we cry again. Yeah, Jay, but this is our record. This is Hillbilly Jimmer. So he's like, come on. He said, yo, don't do the record the way Steven sung it. Huh, what you talking about? Do the record the way Run DMC would do it. What? Switch off, ad libs, come over each other. Do that Run DMC delivery. So me and Run go in there, and that's what you'll hear today. When Steven heard that, because Steven comes on the last verse, he was like, yo, I love that energy. When I do my verse at the end, because Steven was doing all the choruses, but he took the last, the fourth verse. He said, when I do my verse at the end, can you do that hip-hop rap thing that y'all do on my verse too? That's fun. Steven's verse is to see. So swinging, we come over with Steve like that. And then on top of that, while we was in the studio, Steve wanted to rap. He had Jay teach him how to DJ. He was like, what are you doing? Jay taught Steven Tyler how to DJ. And the funny thing is, when Jay was mixing um, the, their, their original version of Walk This Way, Steve kept saying to Jay, when do you hear me sing? And Jay said, ah, wise one, you have noticed that never happens when we do your record. Steve was like, what, up? what, what? Because if you were singing, Steve, we can't rap over you singing. And if we're rapping over you singing, you don't hear us rapping. And if we're rapping over you singing, you, they don't hear you singing. And then Steve was like, okay, I get it. So that day, Steve and Tyler learned how to MC and DJ. And then that day, me and Run learned something valuable. Remember, we didn't want to do the record. Now, when I go to high schools and middle schools and I speak to the kids, I always tell the kids this. Always be open to try something new because it might not just only change your life, it could change the world. People tell me when Steven Tyler took that mic stand and knocked down that wall in the Walk This Way video, D, that didn't just happen in the video, that happened in real life. It's to the point where they may not even know who wrote the song or recorded the song originally. The song is almost, that's, that's when it becomes a folk song. You say, we're not going to take it. And people know to answer, no, we ain't going to take it. That's the response. Did everything work out? Yeah, I'm not going to do a Ringo impression because I've done too many bad ones. But he said, did everything work out uh, from the other day? I heard you having a big disagreement in here and I thought it was sounding great. I said, what was that about? And he said, you kept going on about the bloody cowbells. 